One of the reasons that I use Arch Linux based distributions on most of my machines is because I like the rolling release model of always having access to any piece of software and it always being on the latest and greatest version of that software. And, and this is one of the reasons why I prefer things like Arch Linux, for example, over really stable distributions like Debian Stable or LTS distributions, long term support distributions like Ubuntu LTS, because those distributions are designed for stability, their packages are typically a little older. Their repositories contain older software. In some cases, their repositories don't have programs at all that are already available on Arch Linux. For example, on Arch Linux, I can install Qtile, which is one of my favorite tiling window managers. Qtile is not in the Debian repository. It's not in the Ubuntu repositories if, if you're using Debian Stable or Ubuntu LTS. Another popular piece of software that I love. You guys know my favorite terminal emulator is Alacrity. Alacrity has become very popular, maybe the most popular terminal emulator on Linux that, that people go out of their way to install, not the ones that get shipped with your desktop environments typically. But the problem is you can't install Alacrity without jumping through some hoops on something like Ubuntu LTS. The same with the Brave browser, my favorite web browser these days. It's not in the standard repositories. So today, I, what I wanted to do is I've been getting questions about especially how to install Qtile and how to install Alacrity on things like Ubuntu and Debian. I wanted to show you how I accomplish this on video. So this is a virtual machine of Ubuntu LTS 2204. This is the latest Ubuntu LTS. And the very first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and tackle the problem of installing Qtile because this can be a little tricky. So I'm going to open the terminal and let me make it full screen and let me zoom in quite a bit here. Uh, to install Qtile, it's not in the standard repository. So if I did an apt search for Qtile, you can see Qtile is actually not here. It uh, returns five or six different packages, but they're not actually Qtile. They're packages, I guess, that are in some way related to Qtile, or you could use them in conjunction with Qtile, but Qtile itself is not there. If I did a sudo apt install Qtile, I can actually just verify that, yeah, unable to locate the package Qtile. So what we need to do is we need to install Qtile through pip. PIP is a Python package manager because Qtile is a Python program. You can install it using PIP. So you could do something like PIP install Qtile. Now there are some dependencies I think that we also have to install with uh, alongside Qtile. So we need to also do a PIP install XCFFIB. It's one of the dependencies. Let's see if I can install that with PIP. We cannot. We need to install PIP first because out of the box, Ubuntu does not have pip installed. But you see, the terminal tells us, hey, pip's not installed. Install it using sudo apt install python3 pip. So I'm going to copy that. So control shift C will copy a terminal uh, highlighted portion here, and control shift V will paste it for me. And then if I hit enter, we're going to go ahead and install pip. A few dependencies because some Python libraries have to be installed alongside pip. Now that pip is installed, let me up arrow a couple of times to get back to that previous command, pip install xcffib. And now you can see pip's going to install that Python library for us. Now that we've done that, I'm going to up arrow and now I'm going to pip install Qtile. And it installed successfully. It tells us the location of where it installed. If I move my head out of the way here. You can read the message here. The script Qtile is installed in your home directory slash dot local slash bin. And you see it also suggests that uh, you actually should probably have dot local slash bin as part of your shells path. I typically have that as part of my uh, shells path in bash, fish, and zsh. So if I'm using my own personal configs, that'll be already taken care of by those configs. If for some reason dot local slash bin is not part of your shells path, you should probably add that, not just for Qtile, but so many of your custom scripts, that's typically where people put them. You know, they'll put them in your home directory slash dot local slash bin. And it just makes sense to have that as part of your shells path. That way you don't have to write the full path to a script to execute it. You just type name of script, hit enter, and it executes it. For those of you unsure how to add a directory to your shells path, uh, let me just quickly demonstrate this. If I uh, open the bash RC here inside Vim, 
What I could do is somewhere here near the top, let me get into insert mode, I can do path equals, and then I'm going to do inside double quotes here, I'm going to do dollar sign home, home all caps, slash dot local slash bin, and then I'm going to do the colon, and then behind the colon I'm going to do dollar sign path all caps. So what we're doing is we're taking the path, there, there's already a path that exists, right? And now we're rewriting this path variable and now we're going to add dot local slash bin to the already existing path variable. And that actually should take care of this for us if I write and quit. Let me source the new bash rc and if I do a ls in dot local slash bin there is qtile and now I could probably just type qtile and it would probably be a legit command I, I don't know we're already in gnome it probably wouldn't run it but if I tried to run it you can see it would run it if I gave it an appropriate argument such as qtile start so we did successfully add uh, local bin to our path so that's how you do that what I'm gonna do now is let's verify that qtile did install correctly I'm gonna log out of gnome and I'm gonna try to log into Qtile if it's there in our login manager. So let me log out. So we're back at the login manager. Let me move my head. There's nothing over here right now. Normally there's a little cog wheel that will list all of our window managers and desktop environments. I think I have to click my name first. Yeah. And before I enter the password, let me click the cog wheel. There's Ubuntu, which is just GNOME, and uh, Ubuntu on Xorg, which is also GNOME. Ubuntu without Xorg is Ubuntu uh, GNOME on Wayland. I'm using a uh, GNOME on XORG, but I don't have an entry for Qtile here. So that is unfortunate. So Qtile, I'm pretty sure, is installed correctly. The reason we don't have a login manager entry for it is because I guess when we install it with pip, pip doesn't create a dot desktop entry for Qtile, which typically most window managers and desktop environments will do that for you automatically. But in this case, we're going to have to do this ourselves, which is not a big deal. If I, uh, if I CD into slash user slash share slash X sessions, I'll tab complete here. And if I did an LS, there are two dot desktop entries here, Ubuntu dot desktop and Ubuntu XORG dot desktop. Remember the two entries we saw in our login manager, there's their dot desktop files. And if I open one of these, um, I'll open one of them in Vim here. That is what a typical dot desktop file looks like. You have typically somewhere between six and, and eight lines of information such as the name you want to appear in your login manager, the executable, you know, in this case, GNOME's executable is GNOME-shell, right? The full path user bin GNOME shell. So what we need to do is we need to create one of these for Qtile. And that probably sounds hard, but it's not. I'm going to uh, sudo cp, so copy, ubuntu.desktop, and we're going to copy it over to Qtile.desktop. Give it a sudo password, and now let's vim, or whatever text editor you want to use, qtile.desktop. Now I do need sudo privileges, so let me add that before I hit enter. And now all I need to do is just go in here and change the appropriate values. So I'll do uh, qtile here. And then for the comment here, what I could do is I'll just say qtile session. I don't need to add anything very lengthy here. Now the executable. The, the terminal told us earlier how to start Qtile. It's Qtile space start, right? Because it takes an argument. So let me change that line and I'm going to make the executable Qtile space start. Now I probably do need the full path here just to be on the safe side. So I'm actually going to do a slash home slash dt slash dot local slash bin slash Qtile slash start. Now the try exec, uh, I don't need. The type equals application, that's actually correct. Uh, desktop names, it looks like it's going to do Ubuntu colon GNOME. This is not a required line, so I'll just get rid of it. Then GDM, which is our login manager, session registers equals true. I don't know if that's necessary or not. I'll just leave it. And then uh, Ubuntu get text domain GNOME session 42. I don't think that is uh, appropriate for anything, so I'll get rid of that. We could also, a lot of times, there will be a keywords um, entry here for your desktop entries. So keywords equals no spaces. 
and I'll just say WM for window manager colon tiling. So that's our keywords, window manager and tiling. So if I escape, let's write and quit that. And now once again, let me go and log out. And now let me move my head, let me click on my username, go to the cog wheel, and now we have a Qtile entry. Let me uh, go ahead and click on that. Let's enter our password and see if we actually log into Qtile. And we do. So this is Qtile. You see, we've got our panel at the bottom. We don't have a wallpaper or anything set, so by default it'll be a black background. By default the Qtile panel is also black. The background is, you can see we're using the default config. Now I could go grab my config off of my .files repository on my GitLab, and I could already have Qtile set up just going and grabbing my config. The one problem with my config, though, is my config has a lot of extra widgets that are part of the Qtile Extras package. Qtile Extras is a separate package that has to be installed alongside Qtile. But Qtile is not in the Ubuntu repositories. Qtile Extras is also not in the Ubuntu repositories. So let me do a uh, super enter to get a terminal. What terminal did it launch? Is this the GNOME terminal? Yeah. All right, so still using the GNOME terminal. Let me zoom in. So I wonder if I could actually install the Qtile Extras package using pip. So if I did pip install Qtile-Extras, I don't know if that will actually work. It will not. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to open a browser and navigate to the Qtile Extras documentation and see how to uh, manually install it if the Qtile Extras package is not in your distribution's repos. So I need a browser. I'm going to install the Brave browser. Now Brave is not available in the Debian or Ubuntu repository, so I'm going to do a snap install Brave. So this is rather easy. It says I need sudo. Uh, usually you can do it without sudo, I think. Well, you'd have to enter a password eventually, but it's going to make me invoke sudo at the beginning here. So the fact that Ubuntu has snaps already out of the box, ready to go, you know, this makes installing things like Brave very simple. And you can see Brave has been installed. Let's just launch it from the terminal here just to verify that it works. It does. Uh, let me do a search here. So if I did a search for Qtile-extras and go to their GitHub, let's view the code. Documentation can be found here. Open that in a new tab. Scroll down. Where is installation? Uh, probably up here. Yeah, installation. So it is in the AUR, Qtile Extras, which I know because that's how I get it on my uh, Linux machines because they all run Arco Linux. Fedora also has it packaged if you use Copper. So it's an extra third-party repo on Fedora, but Qtile Extras is packaged for it. Everyone else has to install it by Git cloning their repository and then running Python setup.py install. So let's do that. So let me clone the repository here. So where is the git clone link? Uh, I'm used to using a, a browser full screen. Let me send this to a different workspace. Let's go to workspace two here. There it is, code, and there is the link. So let me copy that. Let me go back to workspace one, and then in the terminal, uh, let me just kill the break browser. Let me kill that process, and then paste the link if we can. Oh, I guess when I killed the browser, I, I, I had to paste the link before I killed the browser, so I lost the link. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, let me do super, is it super P for D menu or super D? What is the run prompt here? Um, well, heck, I'll just open Brave again. Hopefully it opens on the page we were on before. All right, now let me copy that, and I'll just open a terminal on this workspace if I can. Now paste, all right. Then go to the beginning, get clone, and then the URL to that repository, and then CD into Qtile Extras by doing ls. You can see setup.py. So remember the command to actually install is python setup.py install. So python setup.py install. Um, but on Debian and Ubuntu, you actually have to specify Python 3 because I guess by default, Python is actually still a link to the old Python 2. And we get error. It says permission denied. So I'm assuming there's some privileges that are needed here. So I probably have to do that as root or with sudo privileges. So let me sudo Python setup. And now looks like it installed correctly. So now that I have Qtile 
and Qtile Extras installed, my personal config of Qtile should work. Uh, this, I, I've never tried it. <laughs> this will be my first time trying my latest configs on Ubuntu LTS. The last time I actually ran Qtile personally on Ubuntu was probably about four or maybe even five years ago. So I'm going to CD back into the home directory and I'm going to run a git clone https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash dwt1 which is my gitlab and the repo i want to clone is my dot files and now let me cd into dot files assuming it's there there are all my dot files well not all of them because there is the hidden dot files as well so what i need to do is i'm gonna make dear and then I'm going to slash home slash DT. I'm going to do the full path because I'm not currently in the home directory. Dot config slash Qtile. I'm going to make this directory if it's not already there. And it says it's already there. So that's good. I don't need to make it. So let me copy. And from inside my dot files, copy dot config slash Qtile slash asterisk. I'll just copy everything over to slash home slash DT. Let me move my head so you guys can see. I'm going to copy .config slash Qtile slash asterisk wildcard character. I'm going to copy all of that from my dot .files into slash home slash dt slash .config slash Qtile. And I forgot to give it the dash R flag for copy recursively. So cp dash R for recursive. And now my uh, configs that I use on Arco Linux on my main production machines now should be available on this Ubuntu LTS virtual machine. Let's see if I can kill Qtile and log back in and actually have my config working. Actually, my config depends on the Alacrity terminal. Let's install Alacrity before doing anything else. So let me go to a new workspace, launch a new terminal just so I can have a full screen terminal. Now Alacrity is another package that frustrates Ubuntu and Debian users. It's not available in the standard repositories and it's also not available as a snap package, oddly enough. I don't know why no one has packaged Alacrity as a snap. So you're uh, only options are to build Alacrity from source, kind of like we, you know, it, it would do something like a pip install for Qtile. We could do a cargo build of Alacrity. The problem is it's got to compile. Rust is a compiled language, and Alacrity, it takes a while to compile, and it's not necessarily something anybody really wants to do, right? But there is a PPA for Alacrity that just installs a binary build of Alacrity. So let's add the PPA. So I'm going to do a sudo apt-repository space. PPA colon, and then it's going to be aslatter, and that's with T's, A-S-L-A-T-T-E-R, slash PPA space, and then dash Y for yes, because it's going to ask us a yes or no question. It says apt-repository command not found. Of course, let me up arrow. It's add apt repository. It's been a while since I've used Ubuntu and, and had to play with uh, PPAs, so don't be surprised if I fumble around a little bit. But you can see now it's adding the PPA just fine. And now that we've done that, we need to do a sudo apt update to resync the repositories because now we have a extra repository, right? We have that PPA. But we want to be able to sync the repositories now. And now if I do a sudo apt install alacrity, it should be available. And it is. All right. Now I want to kill Qtile and log back in and see if Qtile uses my configs. And if it does use my configs, uh, super enter should launch the alacrity terminal for us. So to kill Qtile, uh, I'm assuming uh, super shift Q. No, super shift X, super X, super Q. And I forget the command, but you can always do this from a terminal. Kill all Qtile. And we're back in the login manager. I'm going to click the username. It's still on Qtile, so that is good. Let me go ahead and enter my super secure password. And it looks like everything worked. Qtile is working. Qtile Extras is also working because that's the only way we would have had underlying uh widgets here in the bar. That's part of the Qtile Extras package. Uh, it's definitely using my config. Super Enter is a key binding I have set to open Alacrity. And there is the Alacrity terminal. Uh, Super Shift Enter should open Dmenu. Dmenu is not installed. Well, let me from the terminal CD into dot .files. Since I've already cloned my dot .files, um, actually, 
my build of D menu is not in my dot files. What I have to do is do a git clone https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash dwt one slash and then instead of dot files dmenu dash distrotube is the repository. Now cd into dmenu dash distrotube if I do an ls there are all the source code files right and then I just need to do a simple sudo make install it says compilation terminated. I forgot about this problem. When you're uh, building some of these suckless packages, there's actually a lot of dependency issues. So there's a lot of dependencies we have to install. So let me clear the screen here. I'm going to do a sudo apt install. And, and I've, I've mentioned this on video before because I've installed so many of these suckless programs on Ubuntu virtual machines before on camera. But some of the libraries we need are going to be lib x11-dev assuming I can spell it. We're going to need lib xft-dev. We're also going to need lib uh, harfbuzz-dev. Let's see if those are the only three we need. So once again, I'll up arrow a couple of times to get back to sudo make install because we're still in the source code directory for dmenu-distrotube. And it looks like we got another error here. This time it's complaining about Xenorama. I should have known that that was one of the ones as well. So let me do lib zenorama dash dev. And the only reason I know what the package names are is because I've done this so many times on Ubuntu with these suckless programs. Otherwise, you'd, you'd have to go look this up a little bit. But let me up arrow sudo make install. And now it compiles correctly. So now super shift enter inside this VM should launch dmenu, but it doesn't. Let me do dmenu run. Okay, it works. So the reason it's not working is because my super shift enter it actually launches a script that calls upon dmenu and that script is not available but I'll, I'll change that if I if I end up keeping this virtual machine. So now we have Qtile, Qtile Extras, my build of dmenu, the Brave browser, we've installed all of them, none of them we're in the main repositories, right? And I know it can be frustrating for Debian users and Ubuntu LDS users to get some of the software installed. And I understand the frustrations. I was an Ubuntu LTS user for many, many years. I've used Debian Stable for a couple of decades, right on and off. Still use it a lot on servers. And the, the thing is, there's always a trade-off. If you want a stable distribution, the reason it's stable is typically is because they don't put a lot of new stuff in their repositories that often, right? And some of these packages are not very old. The Brave browser hadn't been around that long, just a few years, right? Uh, Alacrity has been around for a few years, but it really just became popular, really popular, I'd say in the last three years, right? And, and some of these things just haven't made it into the standard Debian stable repositories, thus L Ubuntu LTS, which bases off of Debian stable. You know, it, it, it can't use those packages because they pretty much use the Debian, you know, they repackage everything that is in the Debian repositories. And, you know, some of the stuff eventually needs to be packaged as a snap is, is what really needs to happen, which Brave is, for whatever reason, Alacrity isn't. Qtile, Qtile used to be in the Debian repositories, I'm pretty sure, because I remember being able to sudo apt install Qtile, I would say seven, eight years ago. I know it used to work like that. And then for whatever reason, it's not in the repositories now, but again, you can install it using pip. Many of these programs you can install through these programming language specific package managers, pip for Python, Cabal for Haskell, and you know, Cargo for Rust, yada, yada, yada. Every programming language has one. So, you know, don't get too frustrated that some of these things aren't in your standard repositories. There's almost always a way to get this stuff even on really old and crusty distributions like Debian or Ubuntu LTS. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James, Maxim, Matt, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Royal, West, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato, Chuck, Commander Angry, George, Lee, Methos, Nate, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch and Fedora, Polytech, Reality, Surrealist, Red Prophet, Roland, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick episode about installing some of these programs that aren't in the Ubuntu repositories, this episode would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All of these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace.